This episode is sponsored by nobody. It's just me, because I have a special announcement later in the episode. So let's get going. Hey guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and I'm sorry I'm just having a little bit of a hard time focusing today, because Adobe Flash Player has passed away. That's why I'm here with my Computer Clan branded box of tissues now available at Select Circuit City stores. And yeah, I'm just trying to get over this. But I'm better now because Adobe Flash Player, like this wasn't just some plugin we're talking about. This is something to celebrate and commemorate. Adobe Flash Player changed the world. It was a staple in the internet and in pop culture. So today we're gonna explore its life and death because it's officially end of life now. And of course, when you add a side of fruit into the mix, apple, you stir up drama a little bit. So buckle in because we're about to go on a mega nostalgic time travel trip. And I'll also show you how you can still play Flash games and enjoy Flash animations, even though browsers are ditching support for the plugin and Adobe's killing it off. So I'll show you that later. But for now, strap in and let's Adobe Flash back to the past. Back in 1993, Silicon Beach software founder Charlie Jackson co-founded Future Wave Software Incorporated with Jonathan Gay, and their first product was Smart Sketch. Smart Sketch was a vector-based drawing application for Go Corporation's Penpoint OS. But pen computing didn't take off in the 90s, probably because the tablets were huge, thick, heavy, and didn't have the greatest battery life. But I'll tell you what, something else started to grow in the 90s, the internet. What's a web page? Something ducks walk on? Ha ha, very funny. <laughs> And at this time, Macromedia was developing their own multimedia platform for the web, Shockwave. But we'll talk more about that later. In 1996, Futurewave released Future Splash Animator, which combined frame-by-frame -frame animation tools on top of the other features from Smart Sketch. And in my opinion, the best part of this new strategy wasn't just the new features, but they were now making the software for Mac OS and Windows two high volume operating systems that had way more users than pen input computers. So that was a good idea. Seems like things are gonna turn out all right. But according to a quote from Gay in an article by Ars Technica, the company was barely hanging on. So Future Wave tried selling the Future Splash technology. One company they looked at was Adobe, but ultimately Adobe declined. But it's okay, because in January 1997, the deal was done and Macromedia officially completed the acquisition of Futurewave. So Macromedia now owned Future Splash, which they renamed to Macromedia Flash. So what happened next? Macromedia launched Macromedia Flash 2.0 with new features such as audio sync, photo importing, and auto tracing, which converted bitmap images into a vector format. This transition, this acquisition, happened at the perfect time. Again, the internet was growing, and now Macromedia owned two two-part platforms. They owned Director and Shockwave Player, and this worked on the web, of course, but it was really big for CD-ROMs. And now they owned Flash, which was similar, but more targeted for the web. So they had Flash and Flash Player, and Flash Player was the plugin a user could install to run the Flash interactive experiences in their browser. Flash animations and games spread like wildfire on the web, but it didn't stop there. Parts of websites, like navigation buttons, for example, were made in Flash because other web standards at the time couldn't provide the flair that Flash could provide. Some sites were made entirely in Flash, so if you didn't have the plugin, you'd usually see nothing, maybe just a few footer links or a message asking you to install Flash. Flash evolved into an ecosystem, powering games, animations, websites, and other interactive applications on the web. And Flash's development capabilities expanded with Actions in Flash 4. Actions consisted of variables, expressions, loops, etc., basically allowing more programming flexibility. And in Flash 5, ActionScript was released publicly as a new feature, which was Flash's built-in programming language based on ECMAScript. And let's not forget about television. Flash wasn't just used to make interactive applications and web experiences, it was actually used for television shows, and it still is today, it's just under a different name, which we'll talk about later. So the Flash platform kept getting bigger and bigger, and Macromedia just had this huge grip on the internet, and it was great. In fact, it was getting so big that it caught the eye of a particular company. A particular company that originally turned down the offer to buy the Future Splash technology. Adobe. But before I continue, I did say I have a special announcement in the middle of the episode, so I guess I'm sponsoring myself today. I don't know if it really works that way. 
But anyway, I just wanted to say that I launched my first ever podcast. It's an autobiographical journey about the channel you're watching right now, The Computer Clan. This channel dates back to 2007, so it's one of the longest running YouTube tech channels that's still active. And I have tons of stories and life lessons to share. So this is kind of like a compilation of the rarely told behind the scenes stories of this channel. It's on multiple platforms. All the links are in the description, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Go ahead and subscribe and start listening right now and enjoy. All right, so back at it. Adobe was now eyeballing Macromedia Flash after initially declining the offer in the Future Splash era. Even though they declined the offer back then, Adobe continued developing many successful applications like Premiere, After Effects, Acrobat, and of course, Photoshop. In my other show, Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures, I released two episodes that were about the first version of Adobe Premiere and a beta version of a very old copy of Photoshop 0.63. So those are really cool, check those out too. So Adobe was doing all right for themselves, but they wanted more. In 2005, Adobe acquired Macromedia for $3.6 billion dollars. And according to Bruce Chizan, Adobe CEO at the time, three billion of that total amount was just for Flash alone. The other 0 0.4, 0 0.6 billion, whatever, that was for everything else that came with it, including Dreamweaver, which is an application Adobe still sells today as part of Creative Cloud. So now Adobe owned Shockwave Player, Director, Flash, and Flash Player. And to make it easier to understand, they renamed Flash to Flash Professional, which are the authoring tools, just to keep the naming a little more clear because that is different than Flash Player. Again, Flash Player plays back the experiences. Flash Professional is the set of authoring tools that make the experiences. Flash Player 9 introduced full screen mode and other enhancements to make it compatible with new developer tools, such as the implementation of E4X. Flash Player 10 started introducing 3D effects and real-time media flow protocol integration and a bunch of other stuff. You get the idea. They kept pushing out software updates. But Flash wasn't perfect. It received its own share of criticism, but you know, everything does. But then, <laughs> I don't know. I guess you could say Pandora's box kind of got opened because Steve Jobs, the frickin' CEO of Apple, then published an open letter called Thoughts on Flash. According to Walter Isaacson, Steve Jobs said Flash is a spaghetti ball piece of technology that has lousy performance and really bad security problems. I know that's technically hearsay, but Steve Jobs unfortunately is not alive anymore, so we'll just have to take what we can get through witnesses. By the way, good book, read it. So yeah, those were Steve's opinions, but I think millions of people would agree. I have vague memories of using Flash content, and generally it felt kind of clunky, especially compared to new emerging standards. But that aside, what I can say for certain is Flash did have security problems. Thankfully, I've never experienced them myself, but it had some holes, and we'll talk more about that later. So Adobe and Apple go back a long way, and there might have been some emotional reasons as to why Jobs wanted to write this letter. But around this time, Jobs was really being scrutinized for being too controlling. Because a lot of people were asking like, why don't you allow Flash on the iPhone? Steve was very firm about not letting Flash on the iPhone. He never wanted it to happen. So after being scrutinized some more, he finally penned this letter and he brought over his friend and fellow board member, Bill Campbell, and they went over the letter before they published it officially on April 29th, 2010. Jobs' main arguments in the letter were lack of openness, reliability, security, performance, and battery problems, and a lack of touch support. The lack of touch is a big thing. Flash was made years ago before touch was bigger. It was made in the PC era, made for mouse and keyboard input. Even if a user could run Flash experiences on their iPhone, those interactive experiences would not be tailored for touch. And they would definitely not understand the iOS specific features like gestures, inertia scrolling, and rubber banding. As for the lack of openness, even though Adobe Flash Player was widely adopted, it was still a proprietary product owned and controlled by Adobe Systems Incorporated. Of course, all businesses need some level of proprietary. Absolutely. Jobs acknowledges this in the letter too. He does say Apple has proprietary products, but he also says Apple wants to adopt newer open standards like HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript, which leads us to his most important point in the letter. It appears that in Steve Jobs' mind, the idea of Flash being another layer of software in the iPhone operating system in iOS 
was a nightmare. Apple released features and APIs for developers to use and features for users to enjoy, but now if Adobe was also added into the mix, everyone would have to wait for them to implement the new features and the APIs, and it could just be a cluster fudge. So that could lead to bigger problems. But the other issue is Adobe is really focused, and rightfully so, on making cross-platform experiences because Flash ran on Windows and it ran on the Mac and on some other platforms. So the issue with that is if you build a Flash application that works the same on all platforms, well, now you're limited by the lowest common denominator. That just doesn't work with Apple's way. They want this, not this. They don't want those substandard apps. So that was another reason Steve Jobs was against Flash on the iPhone. And I think Jobs wraps it up beautifully, so I'll just quote it. New open standards created in the mobile era, such as HTML5, will win on mobile devices and PCs too. Perhaps Adobe should focus more on creating great HTML5 tools for the future and less on criticizing Apple for leaving the past behind. The dude had a crystal ball, I swear. Flash put up a good fight though and it no doubt changed the world, but it just wasn't ready for the mobile era. So many people are on mobile devices nowadays and open standards and great battery life, all that stuff is really important for things like a phone. And Flash just wasn't 100% tailored for that. So we're gonna fast forward. Adobe Flash Player was still widely used over the next seven years, but websites started shifting away from it. For example, in 2010, YouTube was already experimenting with an HTML5 player, and they still had Flash players, but over the years, they phased it out and just used HTML5 players. In February 2016, Adobe Flash Professional was released under a new name, Adobe Animate, as Adobe started shifting to HTML5 tools. And Adobe Animate was still widely used for animation in general, so the name makes sense. Later that year, critical security updates were published due to security vulnerabilities. I recall one from March and then one a month later in April. And believe me, these weren't the only emergency patches. It seemed like this issue was recurring quite often. Unfortunately, Flash Player was becoming a target for attackers, but that wasn't all. The Flash Player name has also been abused for pop-ups and malware installers. Websites would commonly trick users into thinking their Flash Player is out of date, effectively tricking the user into installing malware and other crap onto their systems. Then, on July 25th, 2017, Adobe officially announced they will stop updating and distributing Flash Player at the end of 2020. Over the next three years, developers were encouraged to transition their content to other standards. And eventually, web browsers began warning users about the discontinuation of Flash. Many browsers still supported Flash Player, but they blocked the plugin by default. Also, on a side note, on April 9th, 2019, Adobe did kill off the Shockwave Player. On September 16th, 2020, Apple released Safari 14, which officially dropped support for Flash Player. Later, Adobe continued reminding users about Flash's end of life date and asked them to uninstall. Then, on December 8th, 2020, Adobe performed the last scheduled release of Flash Player for every user outside of mainland China. The uninstall prompt appeared on my computer again, but this time, in addition to the uninstall button, it offered me the option to update. And now, here we are, December 31st, 2020. Adobe will no longer issue updates or security fixes to Flash Player, and they strongly encourage users to uninstall it from their computer. And on January 12, 2021, Adobe will block Flash content from running, even if you have the plugin installed. So now that Flash has finally kicked the bucket, I hope those phony Flash pop-ups will stop. I mean, I know they won't, but... I hope they slow down at least. I just wanna ask a favor of all the techies out there. If you have less tech savvy people in your family, which most of us do, and that's totally okay, tell them if they ever see a flash update pop up, don't click it and you will be the first line of defense against malware. So it's dead now. And if you're nostalgic like me, you probably wanna go back and play some flash games, watch some flash animations, and even play some shockwave stuff too, right? Well, my buddy Sage introduced me to Flashpoint. Flashpoint is a Windows app which lets you browse through archived Flash games and animations, and you can download and play them at will. Currently, the library has tens of thousands of items, so go ahead and have some fun. I remember playing tons of mini clip and candy stand games when I was a kid. Oh, and who could forget Mighty Guy from Fun Brain? Remember that shiz? Okay, well, maybe not, but I do. Oh, and End of the World, that was probably one of my favorite animated shorts. Fire our 
Also, my buddy Michael MJD posted a demo video about Flashpoint, and he will show you how you can use it too. So go check that out. I have a lot of good memories of enjoying Flash content, and I'm sure all of you guys too, so feel free to share them. I'd like to hear about them. Even though, yeah, it did get kind of shaky near the end, I think all of us were affected by it in a positive way at some point. Even though, yes, at the end, people started to hate it. But who knows, maybe that's life's way of making it easier to deal with loss when something finally has to go away. I don't know, I'm not a philosopher. I'm just spitballing here. So, thank you, Adobe. Thank you, Macromedia. And of course, thank you, Future Wave, for making this amazing software. And thank you to all of the cool people that made the fun games and animations that we all enjoyed. As for everyone else watching, feel free to follow me on Twitter for some more tech fun and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more tech episodes every week. I have some great things in mind for 2021. And don't forget about my new podcast, my first ever podcast, No Cameras Allowed. Go ahead and subscribe and listen to that and enjoy. And hey, if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks for sticking with me, catch the crazy, and pass it on.